Hey guys, back after a while. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how I made this little video here for my Instagram. Um, and it looks simple enough, but actually it requires a bit of uh, advanced technique. Uh, this is essentially using proxies, but they're being generated dynamically. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, so. I will say a uh, prerequisite for this is you need to understand how to use Vellum in DOPS. I won't be covering that. Uh, basically using a Vellum stream, um, all that stuff. If you don't know how to do that, I will give you a link below to a Intagma tutorial where they go over that. And I mean, you can, it's very Googleable. You can just look that up. Okay. So. Yeah, that's what we're going to look at. Also, I'm giving away these pizza slices. Three pizza slices. These guys right here. These are real 3D scans of real Brooklyn pizza. Okay, they're very dramatic here, but there's just the flat lighting. This color looks a little off because of my Houdini's and Aces, but that's just enough. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give these away. These are not the super high-res scans, but they come with the full textures and everything, and they have nice... Um, Nice uh, topology. Look at all those quads, huh? Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, hello. All right, sorry about that. Houdini just did something I have never seen it do before, which only ever happens when you are recording tutorials. Um, okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm actually not gonna, this is not a step-by-step. -step. I'm just gonna, um, walk through this project file, which I'm also going to post online because I, I, all my tutorials are way too long, so I'm just going to make this quick. All right, so let me just kill the lights here. Boop. Um, so basically, the way you would do this normally is you would, let's, let's look at this here. So we've got a single pizza slice, boom, falls down, that's it, right? This is very easy. You can do this in standard vellum. And the way you would do this is basically you set up the thing here, so you import your file whatever quick material is so you can visu uh, visualize it. Remesh it, blah, 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 and then you send it out to Vellum, right? So Vellum is getting the triangular version here. Right, so here's your original, and here's your Vellum version. Uh, run it through here. This is just assigning an initial velocity, um, constraints, etc. Run it through the Vellum. You get your geo, you get your constraints. Then basically what you do is you take your high res, you take your simmed version, and then you run it through a point deform. And that's how you get, you know, boom, right? So the melon version looks like this. And then the high res gets deformed. This is great. This is super easy, but the problem is when you have multiple objects, how to point to form those, and especially when those objects are being created frame by frame, um, as we can see in this one, these objects are being randomly chosen and emitted like a particle system, but they're still being deformed in the same point to form manner. And it's actually not super difficult. I mean, I wouldn't say it's easy, but. Um, Yeah, all, all it really requires is being a little bit clever. So I'm gonna try to, oh my God, is this screwing up again? What's going on here? Yeah, okay. Um, so let's just watch this pulled out here. I'll just make you, so this is what's happening here, right? All these slices are being emitted. They have this custom velocity on them. Each one has a different custom velocity, which is also a cool little trick that's built into this file. And they fall and yada, yada, yada. So yeah. So I'm just gonna run through this really quickly and hopefully this makes sense. And please feel free to mention in the comments if it does not, and I will do my best. Um, okay, so basically this whole thing runs on this switch right here. This switch reads a detail attribute being created here. 
which basically every frame, it chooses a, ran, no, a random number between zero and two. So this, obviously the switch goes three inputs as zero, one, and two, right? Um, so this one, each frame creates basically whatever geo this switch is on. Then inside of our, where's our dubnet? Dubnet right here. The vellum source is being activated every fourth frame. And basically the way Vellum source works is it takes the geo here, which is essentially coming out of that switch, and it's just going to emit whatever geo is currently on that frame that the switch is choosing, right? So that's, that's essentially all that this dot net is doing. It's just emitting and it's just gravity. There's really nothing else going on here. So this is just set up to read the geo and then it has the constraints. So yeah, extremely simple um, Vellum sim. So basically, yes, so this switch reads in the variant, and I documented this whole file, so it should be hopefully easy, easier to understand. Um, and then, so this is a cool little velocity thing, which I'm not gonna go over, but basically what this does is it creates um, a rotational velocity um, by, by calculating cross product, and then um, basically it takes the center of the pizza slice and makes other points rotate around it. It's sort of hard to explain, but I'll provide a link to that. I did not come up with this code. I found it on the internet. So, um, and then this one is just basically generating a random position, and this is using sine and cosine so that the position is sort of constantly moving. Uh, yeah, just uh, generating some interest. So these are like fun little code bits that you can just grab and study. Uh, constraints pretty simple. I think it's just uh, I think I just did the tetrahedral defaults. I don't even know if I adjust. I might have adjusted the stiffness or something. But. And this is where the magic happens. So basically what's happening here in the get set variant, we're grabbing the variant uh, attribute, which is the same one that the switch is running on at the beginning. And then we are assigning it to each primitive as it's emitted. So everything that runs through here, you know, each one of these primitives here gets this attribute. Same down here, this is the birth ID. Uh, and the point of this, basically to assign this, is so that every primitive essentially knows which pizza slice it's a part of, you know? So we can read this back later <clears throat> and tell, tell, you know, basically what we, we can basically ask for what we need because it's written into it. Um, this birth ID is the same kind of thing. We're actually gonna use this birth ID as we set it to each primitive to run a for loop, which is over here. And this for loop basically is powering the entire thing. So the, the thing here is the for loop is usually set up to, um, I believe it runs over pieces or points, but it usually runs over things that are um, just attached physically. Whereas in this one here, we're actually using this birth ID attribute to tell it um, exactly what piece is which. Okay, so I have these numbered here. So this is the third part. The first part is what we just went over. That's the vellum setup and the emitter, uh, and also this random variation generator. I just separated this because I thought it was easier to read. Um, and so that's the first part. The second part here is the geo. And basically, so what, what's going to happen here is the for loop is basically going to ask for geo to match the what's coming out of the sim. So if the sim sends it, let's say variant zero, then this for each is now reading this piece of geo, which is variant zero, right? So then this switch here, and this is the high res geometry, which is feeding in down here to the point deform. The point deform needs a high res, a rest, and the low res. And the low res is the vellum sim, the rest we'll get to, and the high res is this. So this switch reads from the for each what variant it needs, and then it so it's linked that way. Then this move up and this grab position offset. The move up is uh, set to the same move up as over here, and that's just because I lifted these off the ground. They're literally just moved up. Um, that's you know you don't need that, but you do need to you do need to duplicate any transforms. Um, at this stage that you did in the uh, emission stage. This position offset, again, this um, 
this position offset here is actually writing the position offsets to an attribute that goes into the for loop so that then now this can read these attributes and position these slices because they're moving every frame they're moving around so whatever frame it's at uh, or whatever um, yeah iterate a piece it's at it can read these right off the piece and just have that built-in position offset because again these slices know what they are they know where they are and they know when they were created okay um, so that is the high res so basically whatever this for loop asks for this high res provides um, and it's du duplicated um, well this is a little off right now that should be there so there's the low res there's the high res because they're being emitted at this at the same place at the same time uh, it's the same concept for this this is the rest geometry so basically this is just like creating geo that isn't I don't think this is position yeah this isn't being deformed but it's basically oh yeah right so every frame basically needs a new rest geo otherwise the point deform just doesn't work and this is definitely like a bit of a, a hack and it might be a little tricky to wrap your head around but essentially we need to keep the rest lattice uh, updated as well so that it has the same number of points so that the point deform can read the number of points correctly and then deform as it goes. It's not a traditional way of doing it, but it does work. Um, so yeah, same thing here. We're reading the uh, variant from the for each and moving it so it emits in the proper um, place. And then yeah, so the for each runs based on the birth ID, which is assigned to each primitive, which tells it which, which piece it is. And then all the geos emitted because it knows which variant it is. So it's all emitted here. And then the result is that in the point to form, you get basically an accurate result um, as it goes and emits every frame it emits. The, um, oops, the um, rest lattice updates and it deforms correctly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's not super complicated. It's just a bit clever. Um, and I will say I did not uh, come up with this concept. This was, I basically uh, was figuring, trying to figure out how to do this, did a bunch of research, found several um, solutions that were not quite what I needed. So I basically stood on the shoulders of giants and um, just like pushed it a little further. But I will post all the reference links. There's some good, uh, there's a good forum. I think it's Odd Force. Um, where they basically just go over a bunch of methods of doing this. There's also a, a Qlib, is that what it's called? Yeah, Qlib uh, point to form capture, which I believe people were saying. Point to form, I don't know, it's on there somewhere. People were saying that's a good uh, solution as well, but this is the one that I went for. Um, yeah, and so this, I mean, this should work with anything. Uh, you just have to make sure that your transforms are set up properly, and yeah, you can swap these out for anything. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm just rambling now. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.